Hello everyone, welcome to IS Baba's 60 days rapid revision series for prelims 2022. This is day 53 and we take up science and technology topics. So the topics from biology and the diseases and ill health. So those are the topics of discussion here. And before that, we will take up the guessworks as usual. So 61st one, consider the following statements. Right to city is an agreed human right and the human habitat monitors the commitments made by each country in this region. Then the right to city gives every occupant of the city the right to reclaim the public spaces and public participation in the city. And the right to city means that the space cannot deny any public service or facility to unauthorized colonies in the city. So friends, as we proceeded with the reading, so the right to city, what it might be. So right to city is not present in constitution or any rule book. So it might be some awareness program or any initiative. So it is not that legally binding. So most probably and so here if you consider the first two statements so they are progressive in nature so that means what an awareness creation program does so these statements are in compliance with that awareness program so right to city it agrees human right so some right should be there and the right to city gives the right to reclaim public spaces and public participation yes so any reclamation of public space and the participation of the public in maintenance of those public places so they are always good for the city and the recognition of human rights is also good for the city but here coming to the third statement it is like it cannot deny any public service to the unauthorized say for example if a government is having shortage of electricity and it is denying that to any illegal colony so the un habitat or the right to city initiative will not come and stop that program so and even if they do the next question the government asks is who are you to do that okay so there the practical ground reality will make sure that the third statement is wrong and the first two statements are progressive so here the progressive statements and the practical ground reality so with those we can say that option c one and two only as the correct option then with reference to india consider the following statements judicial custody means an accused is in custody of the concerned magistrate and such accused is locked up in the police station not in jail then during the judicial custody, the police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect without the approval of the court. So friends here again, so if at all you have watched movies or if at all you have read some stories and others, so you will get to know that if a person is arrested, so he will be kept in the police station and after that within 24 hours he has to be submitted to the courts. So this is the basic law, any movie which is related to the police will depict you. And here it is like once you are arrested by police, so you will be in the police custody. So that is a lockup. And once you are submitted to the court, and if the court doesn't give you bail, and now you will be in the judicial custody. And this judicial custody is not a lockup, it is the jail. Say for example, you take any celebrities for that matter, take Jalilita or even Arnab Goswami case for that matter. So they were actually in jail. So they were given the uniform and they were given the jail numbers. So if you consider that, the judicial custody means the jail, police custody means the lockup. So the first statement stands to be wrong. Then during judicial custody, the police officer in charge of the case is not allowed to interrogate the suspect. Yes, this is ethically correct. So ethical judgment. So that will go in favor of this. So that means if the police is given the permission to hit anyone or to interrogate anyone, so there can be custodial deaths and the court will have to be answerable for that. And such mistakes and misuse court will never do. So two stands to be correct and one stands to be wrong. So we can go with B, two only as the correct answer. Then with reference to India, consider the following. So here when a prisoner makes out a sufficient case, parole cannot be denied to such prisoner because it becomes a matter of his or her right. And then state governments have their own prisoners release on parole rules. So here going with a normal UPSC aspirant's brain who is not a legal expert. So friends parole is not present in Lakshmikon or any other rule books. So what we know is only from the newspapers and here it is like yes the parole can be given if there is a sufficient reason. So for us the statement one stands to be correct and then the state governments have their own prisoners rules. So parole is something which is given for three to four days. So for that we cannot consult the center for every time. And also we know that the law and order is a state subject. So naturally that states will be having their own parole rules. So if you go with that thought process, both one and two will be the correct answer. But however, some of you suggested that the parole is not a matter of right. It is a matter of privilege as per the legal definition. So no matter even if you have put C as the correct answer, so need not repent for that. 
because that is what we could do as per the human capability but however if you have learnt and if you have known that parole is a matter of privilege then go ahead and mark statement one as wrong and you will be given the credit for your knowledge and hard work then come to next at the national level which ministry is the nodal agency to ensure the effective implementation of the scheduled tribes and other tribal forest dwellers recognition of forest rights act so friends here most of you have made it correct but however as a matter of guesswork so here we will be having the concentric circles approach so this statement has the environment so if you take environment into consideration so ministry of environment can be a correct answer and here panchayat raj and rural developments are anyway skipped out and then moving to the next level of analysis so here not only the forests but also the scheduled tribes are given so if you consider the scheduled tribes so now the more chances of this coming into the tribal ministry is more rather than the environment ministry so by that we can go with option d ministry of tribal affairs but however this was an easy question not so difficult then 65 a legislation which confers on the executive or administrative authority an unguided and uncontrolled discretionary power in the matter of the application of law violates which of the following articles of the constitution so friends here we go with the common definition of rule of law so that means one man one rule and one law but if there is complete discretion so that will happen to be like show me the man i will show you the rule so here it is two men two different rules and two different laws so that will hamper the right to equality so again an easy question article 14 will be the correct answer then coming to the topics so friends here we have the taxonomy as the topic because so sometimes good questions have come from this and this is one of the most difficult topics in the science and tech to memorize and remember so i have brought some of the pictures so preserve the ppts of this and revise from this again and again so we will begin with the kingdom monera so monera means mainly friends the bacteria and viruses so viroids viruses and bacteria they will fall under this and here we have the gram positive bacteria gram negative bacteria and all those things so basically pathogens are put under this and remember friends these are the organisms which lie in the harshest environment so we know that bacteria they will live even in the craters of volcanoes and even in the ocean basins so in the coldest as well as in the hottest place they can survive and then come to next the kingdom protista protista means friends protozoans so amoeba paramecium euglena so these are basically the eukaryote organisms so which have a distinct nucleus and also the cell organelles so they will be under protista and then we have the kingdom fungi so fungi means basically mushrooms agaricus and others so friends this is the largest kingdom although we have not explored this kingdom so there are many types of fungi which are yet to be explored and they are saprophytes so they are not primary producers they will feed from the dead and decayed matters of other organisms then kingdom plantae friends plant kingdom is divided into various other sub kingdoms so here we have the cryptogams and phenerogams friends cryptogams means crypto crypto means secret and gams means gamete so cryptogams means plants without gamete or plants with hidden gametes and phenerogams means plants with gametes so here fertilization will not occur here fertilization will occur and then further we have phylum thallophyta bryophyta and peridophyta so this is divided as per the presence of the vascular bundles that is the xylem and phloem so thallophyta is having least vascular bundles and that is why the plant cannot stand taller so these are thallus that means the flat ones which will spread around the ground but it couldn't stand up upright and bryophyta so here we have a very minute vascular bundles that to in the immature form and in peridophyta we have bit mature xylem and phloem and again that is not completely matured and then we have the phenerogams here we have gymnosperms and angiosperms friends gymno means naked so we know gymsters who will like exposure so that means the naked seeds so wherever the seeds are naked so they are called gymnosperms and angiosperms means the covered seeds so seeds are always covered with the fruits in angiosperms so here we have some of the figures so thallus thallophyta means the flat plants here we can see spirogyra and others the flat plants and then come to next the bryophyta so these are bit advanced they are trying to get up but again they are flat so the mosses sedges and the liver worts so remember the liver worts so this is something like a liver we have seen liver while eating non veg food so the same way it looks but greenish in color and then we have pteridophyta so the ferns so they are called pteridophytes so we can see how the plant is getting up but again not so mature vascular bundles and then we have gymnospermae so these are the seeds friends so the naked seeds so that we can see here and friends these trees are present mostly in the temperate zones 
So in the tropical zones, we don't get these. And basically in India, these are rare to look at. But don't confuse this with the coconut and palm trees. So they are not gymnosperms. Coconut and palm trees are angiosperms. Although the shapes of leaves are same in the palm and coconut trees. Then come to next, the angiosperms. So all the flowering plants and trees, they come under these angiosperms. So here we can see and here we have the monocotyledon and dicotyledonae. So that means the seeds, if they have monocotyledon, that is in paddy, wheat, maize, etc. They are called monocotyledonous plants and dicotyledonous in the pulses and others because we have two cotyledons. Then coming to kingdom animalia. Friends, here we have many phylums to discuss. We will discuss one by one. We have the phylum porifera, that means the sponges. Friends, these are present beneath the oceans and that is why we cannot see them so frequently. And they have a very primitive digestive system and the respiratory system. But however, they are not mobile. They cannot walk. And then we have phylum cylindrata. Cylindrata means they have a cylon. That means they have a colon. Or in other words, they have a pipe in the middle. So here we can see the pipe. And here also we can see that pipe. And here inside we have a pipe. And friends, this is hydra. This is jellyfish. And this is the brain coral. Friends, coral means this is not the actual coral. But it comes under cylindrata. Friends, coral, it is a mixture of polyp and zooxanthellae. So remember, coral cannot come under one single phylum because polyp is another phylum, zooxanthellae is another phylum. So don't confuse the brain coral with the actual coral reef which we study. Then come to next, the phylum tenophora. So friends, tenophora has a unique characteristic of the flame cells. That means they will be having some particular cells which will glow in the night. So we have the light worms the same way. And here we can see the comb plates which has bioluminescence. And then we have the platyhelminthes, that means the flat worms. So they are flat. Here we can see the planaria and the tapeworm. So friends, if you eat pork, which is uncooked, so we will be suffering from the tapeworm infection. And these tapeworms, they will leave cysts on our brain and our brain starts getting pus. So one of, so one of the serious diseases the pork eaters will face. And then come to next, the ascihelminthes. Friends, the round worms. So these round worms are present in intestines of children, adolescents and others. And that is why we will have the deworming tablets. So the National Deworming Day is given mainly to rid of these ground worms. And we also have the filaria worm. Friends, this is the main pathogen for the filariasis or the elephant asses. Here we can see the elephant asses. And here we can see the hookworm. So this hookworm will cause an infection like this. And then coming to next, the phylum annelida. Friends, annelida means segmented body. Here we can see the segmented body. If you cut this, earthworm becomes two, but it will not die. The same holds with the nares and the leech. Then come to next, phylum arthropoda. Friends, arthropoda means jointed legs. So poda means legs. We have discussed that. And this is one of the largest phylums in the kingdom of Animalia. And here we have the jointed legs. And they are characterized by the exoskeletons. That is, skeletons are present in the outermost part of the body instead of the skin. Then Come to next, the phylum mollusca. Mollusca means hard shells. So here we can see the snail, which is having a hard shell and the chiton, which is again having a hard shell. But friends, here we have octopus. Octopus doesn't have a shell, but still it is under mollusca. Friends, earlier octopus, they carried the shells, but they have been evolved so that they can move into every nook and corner of the ocean and they can search food for them. So this is about phylum mollusca. Then come to next, phylum echinodermata. So friends, echinodermata means the spiny skin. Echino means spine. Dermata means derma, skin. So here we can see almost all organisms. They have the thorns in their skin, like the sea cucumber, and then the sea urchin, then the starfish, and others. And then we have the phylum hemichordata. Friends, hemi means half, we know that, and chordata means head. So that which is having a primitive head. So that is called hemichordata. So here we can see a head and how the spine goes. A very primitive brain and nervous system. So that is present in this. And this is called the Belenoglossus. So remember the name Belenoglossus. It is not a terrestrial animal. It is found only in marine areas. Then come to next. We have phylum chordata. So this is divided into three subphyla. That is urochordata, cephalochordata and vertebrata. So friends here we have an example for urochordata. And here we have cephalochordata. So they have primitive brains. But however their brain and spinal cord is bit mature compared to the Belenoglossus. So it is not exactly half. So some 70 to 80 percent of brain and spinal cord they will have. So that is why they have been considered under separate phylum. That is phylum chordata. So after urochordata and cephalochordata, we have one more subphylum that is vertebrata. Under vertebrata friends, we have so many classes. 
so that is class cyclostomata so here we can see the hagfish it is cyclostomata for this brain and spinal cord are present but the mouth is not very mature so it is having a sucker mouth like this and this is also a marine species it is not available in every place and then we have the chondrichthys friends chondrichthys means the cartilaginous bones so all these fishes the tiger shark and then the sawfish and the stingrays and others they are made up of the cartilage they don't have proper bones and here we can see the gills are open the respiratory organ is not covered by a gill slit and then after this we have ostichthys that means the bony fishes so these fishes they have bones not just the cartilages so remember friends the seahorse and the fishes they come under ostichthys so seahorse is not a worm it is an ostichthys and then the class amphibia friends amphibia is where the animals have two respiratory organs that is the lungs as well as the skin so here we have salamander so this is an amphibian and then we have the frog so common amphibian and then we have reptiles friends don't confuse salamander as a reptile it is an amphibian but here we have the snakes and then the tortoise then crocodile and then the chameleon so all these are reptiles because they can't respire through the skin they have only one respiratory organs but however salamanders they can respire through the skin so remember the difference don't get confused and then we have aves aves means the birds basically so they are being modified with a small body structure and the hollow bones called the pneumatic bones and they have feathers and their four limbs are modified into wings so that they can fly easily and then we have mammals so mammals are covered with the hair and then they have homeostasis that means they are warm blooded animals so whenever they go to the cold so their body will warm because the body shivers and as and when they go to the heat the body sweats and the body will cool down so the regulation of heat is called homeostasis and they are the breast feeders so they will feed their young ones with their breast milk so these are some of the characteristics of mammalia so friends how the questions come so in 2020 there was a question on the application of drones and the question stated that the drones can inspect the respiration of the blue whales so yes it is possible because the blue whales they can't live under water they have to live on the surface of water because they have lungs as the only respiratory organ they don't have gills because they are not chondrichthys or ostichthys they are mammals and as and when they come to the surface to take the air so we can inspect them with the help of drones so one concept and the importance you give for that concept while reading so that can change your future so make sure that whenever you read the ncrts so read it with utmost concentration don't just neglect them so negligence is something a blunder which the upsc aspirants often do then come to next the national center for disease control so ncdc was formerly known as the national institute of communicable diseases and it had its origin as the central malaria the central malaria bureau so that was established at kasauli in himachal pradesh and it was renamed as malaria survey of india in 1927 and in 1938 institute shifted to delhi and was renamed as the malaria institute of india then due to success in containing malaria disease the government decided to recognize and expand the institute to cover other communicable diseases as well and that is why in 1963 it was called the national institute of communicable diseases and later it was called the national center for disease control so remember the evolution of this body then the who biohub initiative the world health organization and the switzerland have launched the biohub facility that will allow pathogen sharing between the laboratories so two laboratories can share the pathogens and they can have a cross study and this facility will help in safe reception sequencing storage and preparation of biological materials for distribution of other laboratories so they can store and they can sequence and they can also distribute to the others and it will enable member states to share biological materials with and via bio hubs under the pre agreed condition including bio safety bio security and other applicable regulations so whenever we are sharing so there should be a proper agreement it is not like i shared a pathogen and you are releasing that for the public harm so that should not be there bio safety and security shall be the clauses center which the sharing occurs then in parallel who will broaden its bio hub system for the use of biological material by qualified entities such as manufacturers so not only the transfer of laboratory to laboratory can happen but also the transfer between the lab and the manufacturer can also happen that means i have a pathogen i can give it to the manufacturers to produce vaccines for that then come to next the protein antibody conjugates so this approach combines concepts of biologics and antibody drug conjugates to produce the protein antibody conjugates that can be used for the targeted drug delivery 
so we didn't understand we will see whether we will understand in future biologics approach of drug delivery targets a defective protein in the system by delivering proteins to it so defective protein is the indication of disease and one more protein can act as a medicine for that then the other concept is of using antibodies for the drug delivery so either you will use the protein or you will use the antibodies and drug molecules can be attached to the antibody forming the drug antibody conjugates so here it is like the antibody if it is guiding you towards a particular target so you will bind that antibody with a drug and now it became the protein antibody conjugate so the drug is a protein and antibody is a an antibody and this antibody will take the drug safely into the destination where it is actually needed and then the protein antibody conjugates is like an addressed envelope containing the drug and the antibody plays the role of address and indicates the cell where the drug should precisely be delivered so a simple concept but the name is complex that's it then the asperger's syndrome so tech billionaire elon musk announced that he has the asperger's syndrome so what is this asperger's syndrome so unique people they have unique diseases as well it is a disorder where people have trouble in social relationships so this is a disease where social relationships will be harmed and it belongs to autism spectrum which can severely inhibit a person's mental and social development so friends we know that autism patients so they cannot interact with the society they will be isolated so children with autism so they will not mingle with the society they will keep playing those games whichever they are playing throughout the day or throughout the week so these are the symptoms of autism and this asperger syndrome is somewhere similar to the autism then the disorder is named after german doctor hans asperger who first described it and now it is categorized under autism in the diagnostics and statistical manual of mental disorders 5 So friends take it as an assignment so do some research on what is DSM-5 and which authority will designate this DSM-5 so that is about asperger's syndrome then come to next the scrub typhus so recently a mystery fever was reported from the parts of uttar pradesh and this viral fever was identified as scrub typhus so not only in up even in uttarakhand regions this scrub typhus has appeared and the scrub typhus is also known as the bush typhus is an infectious disease with symptoms similar to any viral fever so friends any viral fever comes with weakness headache fever cold cough etc and it is caused by a mite born bacterium called orientia tutsugamushi so remember the word orientia tutsugamushi and it is being born in the mites so remember the ticks mites and others so these are also parasites and it is transmitted by the bite of infected mite larvae in soil containing scrub vegetation so it is like in a soil where the scrubs are present or the bush is present inside that these mites will live and these mites will carry this bacteria and this bacteria will spread this viral fever so remember this is a viral fever but it is spread by the bacteria and it can also be transmitted by lice ticks and fleas so all these can spread not only the mites and it can impact everyone from infants to adults so friends recently many infections have occurred from this scrub typhus so remember the disease the symptoms and the pathogens and the hosts and the carriers then come to next the monkey bee virus china has reported the first human infection case with the monkey bee virus so more about monkey bee virus the virus initially isolated in 1932 is an alpha herpes virus in macaques of genus macaca so remember the host genus macaca and the virus name alpha herpes virus friends we know about herpes virus and this is a variant that is alpha herpes and alpha herpes virus are pathogens that invade the nervous system of their mammalian hosts so if they infect they will invade the nervous system that is brain and spinal cord and the nerves then the infection can be transmitted via direct contact and the exchange of bodily secretion of monkeys so what obvious the body to body contact the feces mucus and others so they will transmit the disease then currently there are no vaccines that can protect against the monkey bee virus so friends here remember the monkey bee virus and also remember herpes virus friends herpes is a disease caused by herpes virus and this is a sexually transmitted disease and here the basic characters are the ulcers on the mouths or in the genitalia and in whichever organ you have a physical contact during the sexual intercourse and then come to next the world malaria report 2021 so recently the world health organization has released the world malaria report 2021 and here india accounted for 83% of cases in the who south east asia region so among the south east asian members of who india accounts for 83% of malaria and india was the only high burden country to record the progress by sustaining a reduction in malaria burden between 2019 and 2020 so during the pandemic times of covid-19 so all other nations 
they couldn't curb but only india curbed the malaria infections and globally 40 countries and territories have now been granted the malaria free certification from who and this includes the china el salvador argentina and uzbekistan and certification of malaria elimination is granted by who when a country has proven beyond reasonable doubt that the chain of indigenous transmission has been interrupted the nationwide for at least previous three consecutive years so for the last three years throughout the nation if the chain of infection is not present so then we will get the certification that is we are malaria free then come to next the marburg virus so marburg virus disease is a highly virulent disease that causes hemorrhagic fever with a fatality ratio of 88 percent so if 100 people get the infection 88 people will die then marburg and ebola viruses are both members of phyloviridae family so remember the phylovirus so remember both marburg and ebola virus they belong to phyloviridae family and though caused by different viruses the two diseases are clinically similar so that means viruses are different symptoms are same and the marburg virus disease was initially detected in 1967 in marburg and frankfurt germany and in belgrade in serbia and recently the mbd was confirmed in guinea as well so from europe it is moving towards africa then humans catch this infection through the prolonged exposure to mines or caves inhabited by the rosettus bats so these rosettus bats so they are the hosts and transmitters of this marburg virus and it can spread through human to human transmission via direct contact of infected people with the surface materials that is mucus sweat etc then come to next the wolf reared stars so what are these these are the massive stars which are at the advanced stage of stellar evolution friends whenever a star is born so it undergoes the nuclear fusion reaction and after some times the nuclear fusion ends and now it becomes a red giant and after that it explodes to become a supernova and here the advanced stage means in the final stage and here as and when the nuclear fusion exhausts so the star starts losing the mass and these wolf red stars so they start losing the mass at a very high rate so that means they are in the very last stage in the journey of stars from birth to death then with the masses typically greater than 25 times that of the sun they have a brief lifetime and they have a brief lifetime and are therefore quite rare objects so it is very rare to see and even if they occur so they will vanish within no time and their wolf red stars are hot that is 50000 plus degrees celsius so a very huge temperature then these are divided into three classes based on their spectra that means what spectrum of light do they radiate so it is the wn stars wc stars and the wo stars that is wn have the nitrogen dominant and some carbon is also present and wc means carbon dominant so n for nitrogen c for carbon and wo stars so they have carbon to oxygen ratio that is less than one so that means oxygen concentration is more than the carbon concentration in wo so this is all about world prior stars then come to next active galactic nuclei so here when the dust and gas from the surroundings fall onto a supermassive black hole so some of the mass is swallowed by the black hole but some of it is converted into energy so we know that black hole absorbs everything that comes into the vicinity of that and most of it is absorbed and some masses they get converted into energy and this energy is emitted back as electromagnetic radiation that makes the black hole appear very luminous so this electromagnetic radiation so they will make sure that the black hole is not blackish in color but it is very bright and luminous and these black holes which emit such electromagnetic radiations they are called the active galactic nuclei and they will release huge amounts of ionized particles and energy into the galaxy and its environment so they are the galactic nuclei that means they are the nuclei of the galaxies and they will emit huge pulsations so that is why they are active galactic nuclei and they will give the brightness to the whole galaxy for that matter and both of these ultimately contribute to the growth of the medium around the galaxy and ultimately the evolution of galaxy itself so how the galaxy survives sustains and dies so all these are influenced by these electromagnetic radiations so this is a brief description of the active galactic nuclei then come to the last part friends we have seen that science has achieved what not in its life so starting from the very minutest of the minute to the very greatest of the great so we have achieved from the microcosmos to the macrocosmos but the only aspiration for the human being is to survive so science should not be used to destroy others 
it should be used to make sure that the dying person survives at any cost. So as the responsible human beings, we should make the best use of technology and that too for the welfare of the people and the welfare of the humanity and for the welfare of universe. So we will all move towards that journey. So all the very best from my side. Good luck friends.